can be an amazing time. I don't know about you, I quite like my sprouts and I like the chocolate, maybe a nice bit of Baileys. Of course, Christmas this year may not be how we've got used to it being. We've had COVID all year to deal, contend with. And if you're getting into that festive season and you're feeling a little bit down because of everything that's happened this year, you may feel that this year has really slowed down your progress in the area of dating. Hopefully this section will really help you to feel good about being single. And as I said, Christmas can be a magical time, but it can also be a bit of a difficult time if you're a single person. The rom-com movies are all over the television. You have nice distant relatives asking you why you're still single. And it can really, as the nights draw in, it can give you an opportunity to reflect on everything this year has been. So if you're not feeling 100% great about things at the moment, I don't think you're alone there. And hopefully this section will give you some useful ideas about how you can start to feel good about yourself so you feel that energy and that motivation to go out there and get the amazing relationship that you deserve in 2021. So we're gonna look all about our mindset and I think mindset is super important because if emotionally we feel good about where we are in our lives and we have a clear head and we're totally ready to go, then all of the practical steps that you need to take to meet someone some suddenly become so much easier. So let's not undervalue getting our mindset in a great place about being single. So the first mindset shift that I want us to look at tonight is all about accepting our feelings. So this year, whether it is the pressures of COVID or that slowing down the progress in your dating life, you may not have the most positive emotions about that. You may feel a little bit stressed about it. You may feel frustrated that that happened. You may feel annoyed. You may feel sad. And when you have those emotions, I think it's so important instead of brushing them under the carpet and also inwardly telling yourself off like, oh my gosh, I should be being more positive. I shouldn't be letting this bother me. Instead of kind of blaming yourself for having those emotions, I think it's really good to give yourself a bit of permission, if not any other time, do it tonight. Give yourself a bit of permission to feel and experience those emotions. How we move past difficult emotions isn't by ignoring them, uh, though it might seem that that's the right thing to do at the time. In fact, a lot of it is about becoming more comfortable with those hard emotions. So start to practice some acceptance around how you're feeling. So for you, that could be saying something to yourself like, you know, I accept at the moment I feel a bit frustrated or I accept that I feel annoyed or I accept that I'm feeling a little bit down. And usually the second that you stop fighting how you feel and you allow yourself to experience your emotions, that's actually when you start to feel a bit better about things. So allow yourself some space. If it has been a difficult year, first of all, give yourself a pat on the back for getting it this far. Like, well done, everyone. We've made it. Only two more weeks of 2020 to go. And also allow those emotions that you feel about it to be there. Sometimes emotions also tell us important things. You know, if you feel frustrated, maybe it's because you're really motivated and you're like ready to go out there and make 2021 really good. If you feel sad, maybe it's because forming a committed relationship is important to you. And th these, are, these aren't negative things. So accept your emotions and that will hopefully allow them to shift and pass as we prepare ourselves for hopefully a much better year next year. So, Next thing that I want to look at in terms of your mindset is really how you can then move from that space of maybe not feeling amazing about how this year has gone to a place where you feel really back in the driving seat, back in control and really empowered in your dating life. So to get there, I'm gonna tell you about something that you can say to yourself, which will make you feel the opposite of that, which will make you feel quite disempowered, out of control, that things aren't very good. And I'm sharing this with you, and this is definitely something I've said to myself on quite a few occasions during my, my own single days, which is, I'm doomed, I'm destined never to meet someone, fate is not on my side. So if you've found yourself recently getting into that mindset around dating, where you feel like it's totally out of your control and it's just not in your stars to meet this amazing person, then this hopefully is about you getting outside of that track of thought and starting to become open and starting to really believe that an incredible person is out there for you. So what happens when we say that we're doomed uh, is we basically also let go of all of our control to create change. Of course, there are things in life like COVID <laughs> that we can't control. 
However, there's so much that we can do to create positive impact and change. So rather than believing that we are a victim of fate, it's so much better to actually toughen up here and think, okay, that was hard. That obstacle really got in my way. That really kind of frustrated me. And yet it's probably slowed my progress down. But you know what? I've got myself, I really believe that I'm ready and able to meet someone. And you know what, this is the action that I'm gonna take next year in order to get to that space. So I want you, when you start to go into that, it's all doom, the doom mode, um, I would say, first of all, give yourself 24 hours. Get, if it was me, I'd get some, a blanket and probably a, a, some chocolate ice cream. Give yourself 24 hours to really like, if you wanna have a wallow, go for it. I don't think that's all bad. But then after that, I want you to really focus on how you can tell yourself everything that you can do. Don't tell yourself about stuff you can't do. Really focus on what positive changes you can make. And it could be something quite simple. It could be setting aside more time for dating. It could be a little spring clean on your dating profile. Sometimes these small actions of trying to do things differently or doing things with a renewed energy and focus can really do a lot to help you get back on the track of meeting someone. So we've spoken about getting out of the doom mindset. Easier said than done, Haley. I know that's what you're thinking, but that's all try. Um, the next mindset that I want you to try and navigate around um, is going to be called what I call black and white thinking. Now, if you haven't heard of this before, uh, I bet you may have done it. I certainly have myself. So I'll give you a couple of really easy examples of black and white thinking. And black and white thinking is really when you believe there's only two options or only two things that could happen. So the classic dating example of this is feeling like I have to choose between the nice person who I'm just not attracted to and I don't really feel that way about, or I choose the person I'm really attracted to, but who doesn't want the same loving and committed relationship as I do. Have you ever said that? I, I definitely know I have. So when you get into that, in that mindset, it's a very binary outcome. It means that you either get, you, you either way you have to compromise. You have to choose the nice person who doesn't set your world on fire, or you set, you choose the person who sets your world on fire, but who can't give you the relationship you want. It's again, like you're doomed either way. Um, and instead, at this point, it's really important to realize how, in fact, there's so many different variations, different options, different people in the world that you could meet. And that actually, you are allowed, get this, to have someone who you are attracted to and who also wants to have the same level of relationship you do. You don't have to compromise on that. So it's good for you to realize that in the world of dating, there's so many more than just two options out there. So avoid thinking there are two options because when you do, what it will actually do is just heap pressure on you because suddenly you'll start to think, oh my gosh, I have to choose one of these options and neither, I don't like either of them. They're both really bad. So when you're in that frame of mind, again, it can feel a bit like a pressure cooker and it won't help you to feel really good about being single. And one of the funny things I think about being single is, although there is, you may feel like there's this time pressure that you should have got stuff fixed by now, you need to find something quickly. It's actually learning how to exit that mindset and enjoy dating that's really gonna help to get you on the right track to meet that incredible person who is out there for you. So, or incredible people, because there is more than one. So another example of that black and white thinking and that pressure could be that you are starting to put uh, milestones or a timeline on when you're going to achieve certain things. So you may say to yourself, okay, by my next birthday, I'm going to meet someone. Or by 2021, by the end of that year, if I haven't met someone by the end of that year, that's it. Again, and then you go back to doomed. I'm doomed. Uh, and when you're in this train of thought, I know how overwhelming that can feel when you're not feeling really good about what's happening at this point in time. But you have to, at this point, kind of go, okay, actually, I'm not on a timeline. Keep saying this affirmation to yourself. You're not on a timeline to meet someone. You're not on anybody else's timeline. We all know that commitment isn't a race to get there first. It's all actually about, about making good and healthy choices for yourself. And we all have different paths through life. And we find those meaningful connections at different stages. 
but you are not running out of time. You've still got plenty of time. So don't let those timelines get in the way. This all links to my fourth mindset shift, which is about getting outside of this scarcity mindset around dating. So by scarcity, I mean that sometimes we can feel with dating, it's like the equivalent of going through a supermarket. It's Christmas Eve, it's 9 p.m. None of the things you wanted are left. They've all gone, the shelves are empty. You're only left with like a few odd vegetables that you just think, oh my gosh, I, what could I do with that? So that's the scarcity mindset around dating. It's feeling like all your options are running out and all the options that are left aren't the ones that you want. So we often fall into the trap of feeling that scarcity around dating when we have probably too high expectations of, or, and that very much black and white thinking about our dating experiences. So if you're going into your dates at the moment and you're kind of going, your main reason of thinking is a date successful or not is you're thinking do they seem like the one or are they not the one <laughs> so when we go in with that big expectation into our dates and again that very binary outcome where it's like great it's the love of my life or no it's definitely not uh, that is a very very good way again to pressurize that first date and also to get really demotivated because for our first dates chances are you're going to go into that first date and think this person isn't the one. <laughs> and then when that happens enough times, again, that's gonna really chip away at your confidence and your motivation to continue with dating. So it's like, how can we change how you're approaching dating to feel more abundant, to feel more positive, to feel like there's great options out there. And funny enough, this isn't about you meeting different people. This is actually a change that we have within us. So the change within us, is instead of going into dates with these very high expectations and only one of two outcomes that we're looking for instead i want you to go into your date and i want you to think what have i enjoyed about this or what have i liked about this person even if i don't feel like i necessarily want to continue seeing them so it could be something like you like that they planned the date for you it could be that you liked how they asked you lots of interesting questions it could be that you like their sense of fashion it could be that you got a good a recommendation for a book from them. Sometimes it's about finding those moments of actually what you did get out of that date. And when you have that sense of, dare I say, gratitude, but even those quite small wins of just enjoying getting to know people, then suddenly in that dating supermarket, the shelves are stopped. Okay, not you may not necessarily want to take them for Christmas or not want to have a long-term relationship with all of the options that are out there, but you can find different part of getting to know people very rewarding and very interesting. So remember, make that mindset shift where instead of thinking that a date is a success or a failure, depending on really whether you feel that spark or whether you feel like someone could be the one, instead start to find things that you like in people and start to think, find things that you enjoyed about the process of dating and getting to know people, even if you haven't met that ultimately super special person just yet. So final big mindset shift that we're looking at this evening, and I know we're going through a lot of detailed stuff, so I really hope you will be watching this session back again. The final mindset shift is to actually look at your story around dating. So when we say to ourselves, I'm doomed, that's a story that we've made up. It's a kind of way that we view ourselves and the world of dating. Is it also that if you say, oh, I have to choose between uh, a Mr. person who's amazing, but who doesn't want to give me the relationship I want, or a person who is quite nice, but I don't really, really feel the spark for. Again, that's a story, it's just an idea. So let me give you an even more um, easy example. So I bet that a lot of you listening will have had an experience recently where maybe someone hasn't written a message back to you. Now, when someone hasn't written a message back to you, it could be quite easy to start to give a lot of meaning to that. You might think it's because my file isn't good enough or the message I wrote was really bad or they have rejected me. They don't like me. They've met someone better just from a simple action, like someone not responding to your message. Immediately, we can create a lot of storylines and a lot of those stories can actually be quite damaging to our self-esteem. They're not really giving us a pat on the back and saying, keep it going. They're in fact saying, you're not good enough. 
So the key is really when you're thinking about story, first of all, it's good to not have stories where there don't need to be stories. So if someone hasn't um, written you a message back on a dating site, it doesn't have to actually mean anything. They just haven't written you a message back on a dating site. Um, and if you do choose to create a story around this, which is a sort of a rationale or a reason why something's happened, you choose to create a story that actually makes you feel better and more positive about dating as a whole, because it's not about winning everybody over. It's actually the important here, thing here, the, the secret recipe to success is making sure that you are motivated and you feel really good about yourself to stay the course and keep going until you do ultimately find that person you have an amazing connection with. So your story that you may choose about someone who hasn't sent you that message back on a dating site, you may instead choose to think, you know what, I really need to be with someone who's responsive and communicative. This person isn't showing up for me as having those qualities. So I guess that's them out of the running then. So instead of seeing it as a reflection of your self-worth, start to see it more like this is just them showing how compatible or not they are to you. So remember, get your story in the right place. It's time, remember 2021 is looming, it is a new year. Let's all start to really have that belief that you are good enough, you do deserve to meet someone and it is going to happen for you. You're gonna get through those challenges. Okay, so before our next chapter, let's have a quick recap of this section. So remember, it's okay to acknowledge that this has been a difficult year for you. You are, we're all allowed to have off days and not feel great. You create abundance. That's that feeling that there's loads of good options out there by recognizing what you do like in people. And remember, when it comes to dating, there's a lot of things that we can't control, but there's also a lot of things that we can control. So put yourself back in the driving seat and start to believe in yourself. You can do it. It's going to be a better year next year. So before I move on to my next section, I've got some questions. So I really appreciate those of you who have sent them in early. So first of all, starting with a question that's actually quite close to my heart. It's what's the best way to approach dating when one is disabled? So this is really a very personal question for me because uh, one of my parents is in fact disabled. So I am myself the product, I suppose, of a disabled uh, dating success story. So when it comes to how to put that across to people, first of all, absolutely know you can 100% meet people and they're going to be people who will be accepting, empathetic and wanting to connect with you. So when it comes to disability, I think there's always things in the world of dating, whether it's a physical disability or a hair, your color of your hair or your political beliefs, there's always something that can make someone choose not to want to be interested in us or not to want to continue seeing us. And that's okay because we don't need to actually impress everybody out there in the world. All we need to do is do a really good job of communicating who we are and finding out the people who we have the best opportunity to really connect with. So I would say with your disability, be open about it. Definitely get some pictures out on your profile. When you speak about it, speak about it from a space of acceptance, of positivity, of showing that you're at peace with everything. And you know what? The people who are going to be most aligned to you, the best matches out there, they are not going to be phased at all by that. So I'd say keep, keep it positive, be open about how you present it, and trust that this is only going to be a filter to help you find amazing people. So second question, how do I make myself interesting to a possible date? Um, so <laughs> I'm going to spin this question around a little bit. So I know it can be easy when we're going into dates to think, oh gosh, like how can I, you know, ask them the right question? How can I say the right thing? How can I be interesting? But when we're in that mindset, again, this is a mindset thing. What we're doing is we're approaching dating a little bit like the seller as opposed to the buyer. We're like, please, 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 someone like me. And um, so instead of thinking about how can you change yourself to be someone that the other person is interested in, it's really a case of, instead thinking how can i communicate myself really clearly so that if i do have that natural connection and compatibility with the other person that they're going to be able to recognize it so things that you might want to ask yourself is instead of thinking about how you can be interesting and sort of perform well for the other person instead think 
what would make me more attracted to the other person to know about them? What things do I like to talk about? What am I passionate about? What am I interested in? What would I like to connect with, with this other person on? So you start to base your experience of dating around connection and around looking out for someone who's got similar values and interests to you. And also, as long as you couple that with also being present and really listening to your date, that's actually the way that you'll also become interesting. Because when we talk about stuff that we're interested in, we're passionate about, we very naturally become more attractive. And if you double that up with also um, really actively listening to another person, this is a really great recipe for success. So third question, and I think this is going to be a very relatable question for lots of people out there which is how to know the thin line between being creepy and not at all making a move. So the first of all, I want you to give yourself a pat on the back. I think the fact that you're being aware and conscientious and are trying to be considerate and not creepy, that's a very good sign that you're not being creepy. So I think in dating, it can be a bit difficult because we all know that an important part of the dating process that separates it out from just being friends is at some point we have to show what our intentions are, that whether that's through a compliment or a little bit of teasing, or dare I say, even flirtation. So how do you go about making that and making that little bit of intention clear enough to create a spark if there is that opportunity without also making the other person feel uncomfortable if they don't necessarily see things in the same way? So the first thing I would suggest is to when you do give your initial compliments, I, I don't know if you watched my last coaching session on how to create the spark, that'd be a really good one for you to look at. A good thing to focus on at the start is actually to go for um, non-physical compliments. So it's gonna be a lot safer for you to say, I find it really attractive how ambitious you are, or I really like how caring you are. So we're still using those words like attractive and like, but we're making it about someone's personality. That's usually kind of a better territory to be in in the world of compliments and to see how someone reacts rather than going straight in with a physical compliment. The second thing that's really important for you to look at is you want to also witness how someone reacts to what you say. It only becomes creepy, I think, when someone gets either gets the impression that you're not being very open with them and maybe the reason you're offering to do their shopping every week is because you might have a bit of a crush, or it also becomes creepy if someone is constantly giving attention, which isn't reciprocated. The reciprocation is really the important bit. So as long as someone is accepting the compliment, is really engaged in the conversation, is happy chatting to you, seems to want to spend more time together, then this is good to continue. If someone shows discomfort, if they don't acknowledge the compliment, if they don't return a compliment, if they, are unavailable to meet you or don't seem so interested anymore and that that's when to put the brakes on so really it's not so much about not saying anything it's about saying a little something waiting for the other person to reciprocate and keeping remember that sending your intentions creating that spark that is a dance it's a two-way street so as long as you remember it's a two-way street um you're going to be absolutely fine so now talking about actions that you can take. Let's take a look at our next chapter.